do is just give you a little bit of an overview of exponential functions. So one important thing about exponential functions is what we have is f of x equals a raised to the x power, where a is a number greater than zero, where x cannot equal one, and x is really any real number. So let's just kind of give some examples and see if we can determine are they going to be exponential or not. So if I did f of x equals 3x squared, f of x equals um, 2 to the negative x, and f of x equals, I don't know, let's do uh, 4x squared. 4 to the e x squared. Okay, so the first one is we need to determine is this going to be exponential? Well, if it's exponential, all right, one thing is you have to have your variable as your exponent. And here I have 2 as the exponent. So therefore, this is not an exponential equation. This is actually a quadratic, or, well, not a quadratic, but it's a, uh, a, well, it's a polynomial to the degree to, I'm losing brain mind, but it's not an exponential. Um, over here, I have, all it says is x is any real number. So since I have my x as my exponent, my variable as my exponent, this is exponential. Um, so that one's good. And then over here, it just says a has to be greater than zero. Well, e is my constant, all right, which we'll be talking about. So e is actually not a variable in this problem. e is actually going to be a constant. And since, again, my variable is it as, my, uh, as my exponent, this is also going to be exponential as well. So these two are both exponential equations. This one is not. So remember, exponential, the main important thing is, besides these little constraints, is that you pretty much have your variable as your exponent. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, transformations with that. So if I'm given by f of x, equals a to the x, right? And let's look at the parent graph. If I'm going to graph this, okay, there's something that's going to be really important. If x is equal to 0, a raised to 0 power, x equal to 0, that means on my y-axis, right? If x equals 0, that we know it's always going to equal 1. So it doesn't matter what my a is. Whenever, my, every single one of those graphs are going to cross at this point, all right? Then the rest of the graph is just gonna kinda go like this, all right, and it exponentially grows larger. This keeps on going smaller and smaller, closer to uh, zero. So what we have is our domain is from negative infinity to infinity. Our range, the y values, is from zero to infinity. And the x-intercept, is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, x-intercept is there is no x-intercept. You can see this is never ever going to cross the x-intercept. And our y-intercept is at 0, 1. All right? So those are kind of your just basic bullet points for there. And if I want to talk about now, let's look at transformations. What's going to happen uh, when I have like a transformation? Well, first of all, if we do an f of x, equals ax, and let's actually put the k in front. If I add a number to my function, and it's outside of the function, right? What that's going to do is that's going to, actually, yeah, I can do it on the outside. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you add the k in front or behind. ax plus k. Well, this is going to shift my graph up k units. This is going to shift my graph down k unit. So I'm just going to do a plus or minus, and what this will say is shift graph up, down k units. All right? So if ever I, whatever my function is, you know, ax, whatever up there, if I add a number outside of that, that's going to tell me to shift this graph up or down. If I do f of x equals a to the x, and I do plus or minus h, and it's inside of this function, that's going to tell me to shift left or right. And remember, it's always the opposite. If I had plus h, that would be shift left h units. And if I did 
I subtract, that would be shift H units to the right. So when I just do plus or minus, all it's going to tell me is to shift, grab, um, left, right, H units. All right? Now there's two more functions we need to talk about. We have f of x equals negative a to the x, and we have f of x equals a to the negative x. And it's a very, really easy way to remember this. If I look at a point, let's look at the point um, negative 2, 2. Right? Where you have x, y. If I'm going to make my x now negative, it would become this point over here. 2 comma 2. Right? If I had a negative point, if my point was negative, and then I do the opposite of it, I get a positive. So if I look at this, what did I just reflect about? I reflected about my y-axis. So this is what we call a reflect y-axis. So therefore, when you just make a negative sign outside of the function, that's going to be a reflection about your x-axis. So what I'd do is if I was reflecting the x-axis, my graph would look something like that. You know, and if I was going to reflect about the y-axis, it looks something like that. So that's just a general overview of exponential functions and how we do their transformations.